imagine the harumphing back in the 1880s as it dawned upon the stiff, starched British Parliament that those damned Germans and French and their growing foothold in the Asian region was threatening the very idea of a great British Empire? My God, no. To protect their interests in the area, tobacco, rice, sugar, sago, the British established North Borneo as a protectorate and sent in their men. These guys were adventurers, daredevils, men willing to roll the dice in an uncharted land of lethal heat, dense rainforest, pirates and headhunters. In 1896, construction rolled out in what would have been a relentlessly inhospitable place. Trees fell across the tracks and the local tribespeople were constantly stealing parts because they believed the train, this iron horse, to be an evil spirit. The North Borneo Railway was established in 1914 and used intermittently until 1971 when diesel trains replaced the unreliable steam engines. The old locomotives were mothballed until 2000 when they were dusted off for the tourists to keep the colonial dream alive. Twice a week they fired up for a four hour return trip between Kota Kinabalu and Papa. The very friendly, safari suited, pith helmeted, wearing staff serve you up morning tea after departure from Tanjung Aru Station. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are reaching our first stop in our town. Show your passport, please. Forty-five minutes at Kinnerut Station gives you just long enough to uh, have a frantic tour of the local market. They've got everything from a rather confronting-looking marinara mix. Not what I'd immediately think edible. All sorts of spices. Look at this one. Guaranteed to get you running the 100 metres in less than 10 seconds. Look at that. So spicy, the vendor needs to wear his helmet. You want to try? No, too powerful. <laughs> You'll engrave your computer and restring your racket. Jack of all trades. Having exhausted the highlights of town, there is movement at the station. And what Papa lacks in tourist attractions, it seems this is what the train spotters came to see. This is, I believe, what the ferroequinologists, the train buffs, refer to as a shunt followed by a coupling. With the engine safely coupled, the rear is now the front. We are heading back to Kota Kinabalu. And as the scenery is exactly the same as it was on the way here, we can concentrate on lunch. Although there are many references to the British colonial past on this train, and this tiffin lunch is very much a popular item in India, its menu of Bakak Baku Bakis Masak Udang and Ayam Pangang Berampa Dihidang Bersama Nasi Bakit Saba is very much Malaysian. Chicken and rice. There's no doubt about it, this is a very slow train ride prone to a somewhat unreliable schedule. And Travelling through some tangled jungle, some scruffy local industry and some sometimes frighteningly temporary looking trackside shacks. But 
having survived the First World War, the Great Depression, the Second World War, Japanese occupation, and long periods of disinterest, it's great to know that this train is still chugging.